Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Advantest with Adrian Kwan, who's going to talk today about the challenges of 5G test. So Adrian, 5G, there is no single 5G. There are multiple versions of this, and there are multiple iterations of this. What are some of the challenges that you're seeing as we go forward? Yeah, the 5G is a new era, right? I mean, it's, it's not just for uh, mobile communication, but it's going to affect us uh, in all walks of life. Um, it's going to uh, deploy things like automotive, uh, infrastructures, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, more mobilities, and we're talking about also having industrials and even things like agriculture, healthcare, and things, all this coming in together uh, to actually formulate this whole 5G ecosystem. What are some of the problems that we have to deal with in testing this? Because this is a brand new area that nobody's ever done before, right? Right, yeah. So testing uh, 5G devices obviously becomes a challenge, uh, especially in within the ATE space, uh, where we have been so comfortable doing sub-6 gigahertz testing for the past 20, 25, 30 years, right? Um, so things are going to change uh, absolutely, right, uh, when it comes to uh, testing this kind of new type of devices. Uh, which encompass higher frequencies, higher bandwidth, different modu modulation schemes, you know, and stuff like that. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. What are we looking at here? I drew this 5G spectrum here, uh, which also encompass the 5G sub-6 gigahertz. And we're talking about 5G in the millimeter wave space, uh, which is also defined in the uh, latest release uh, of GGPP. And the, the millimeter wave obviously is a huge range between 24 to, I mean, talking about 44 gigahertz today, but there also talks about 50 gigahertz and it may be even higher. So we have to be uh, ready for the future of 5G as it moves along in terms of the uh, frequency spectrum. And on the other part of it is, uh, besides the frequency spectrum, we also have to consider the modulation bandwidth or, or the, the, the the frequency uh, uh, spectrum uh, bandwidth that is going to be transmitted uh, through the channel. So in, in the sub-6 gigahertz range, obviously, uh, typically bandwidth are within the 200 megahertz modulation bandwidth. Uh, the the 6 8 to 18 gigahertz, or sometimes we call it the sub-18 gigahertz, are typically ranging between 500, 800, uh, and 1 gigahertz. And that goes the same for the 40, 24 to 44. Is there a difference when you're dealing with the, the testing of the handset versus the base station? Um, yeah, so typically uh, handsets and base stations are, uh, are very different uh, because the, the infrastructure of the base station uh, requires much more complexity in terms of, in today's case, if you discuss about a base station that deploys 64 uh, 128, 256 kind of uh, face array obviously have a very different architecture from what the phone is uh, where we, we probably only need by 8 or 16 or maybe max 32 kind of uh, face array uh, structures. So testing them is definitely very different. Uh, um, obviously we need to consider different things in terms of the architecture and as well as the form factors and stuff like that off uh, between the base station and uh, forward, right? And the handset gets very complicated because now you've got antennas built right into the chips too, right? Correct, yeah. So um, antennas in package, which is uh, AIP is a common term uh, today, is, is gaining a lot of popularity because right now as we go up higher in frequency, obviously we can incorporate uh, antennas uh, within the, uh, uh, the module itself, right? So this is something that needs to be taken into consideration when um, test is involved. How do you make sure you get enough coverage of these uh, devices? Because they are very complex, they're very dense. In terms of uh, test coverage, um, definitely uh, compared to what we are testing in the sub-6 gigahertz transceivers today, uh, there's a lot more to consider because we need to, especially for AIP devices or antennas in, in package devices, where we need to think about the phase shifters, we need to think about gain controls, both adding with the phase shifters, and how that come together and how we actually uh, uh, measure up in terms of the different transmission angles and path, uh, and how this different phase array come together and, and combine uh, at the end of the day 
in the, in, at the antenna side, right? So these are the, a lot of these challenges uh, definitely we are going to face in, in the ATE space. And you're also testing more than you were in the past, right? Because now you're not only testing the device, you're testing it in motion in the field. Yes, so that's what we call mission mode testing or sometimes full duplex testing is becoming an, a norm these days. Uh, and that's why we, the architecture of the ATE has to really uh, enable us to do this kind of testing because for the past 20, 25 years, the architecture of, of uh, RF solutions on the ATE has, has very, very, a lot of limitation in terms of doing this kind of mission mode testing. You've got a lot of pieces here that you have to test for that you didn't necessarily have to test for in the past, right? Correct, yes. And um, that's why here the, the diagram kind of illustrates, I mean, 5G is a basically a huge pipe, right? Uh, and obviously we have to consider uh, the past uh, standards uh, like the Edge, GSM in the 2G, 3G, 4G, and even today we have the LTE IoT, or sometimes we call it the narrowband IoT. Uh, this are uh, what we have today, right? In in in, in today's world on the mobile uh, uh, phones, but moving forward, I think things are gonna get even more complex. I mean, in terms of things in the automotive side, like uh, UWB, which is ultra wideband, is being deployed by cheap uh, manufacturers, um, and obviously the demand for things like ultra low latency, which is the ULL, they demand for a, a, a huge deployment, especially uh, the ultra uh, density, we call it, right? The, um, and, and ultra density deployment. So this is where uh, automotive comes into play, where infrastructures needs to be deployed, uh, automobile will have to be deployed. So these are the things that are coming into this whole 5G pipeline. What are you actually testing for there? Is it the device itself and the standard kinds of tests that you do? Or are you, are you really working now on signal integrity, what's going to work out in the field? Well, yeah, the, the device itself has to, first of all, it operates in a slightly different frequency range, not within our norm of the sub-6 gigahertz. So we need to kind of uh, take care of that uh, in that space, right? And obviously, at the end of the day, this device will have to work with the infrastructures uh, and within the ecosystem of 5G. So that again, that is a different set of tests in, in probably more in a system level type of things. And this gets even more complicated because not only do you have a 5G signal, you also have the 4G and 3G when you start running out of range too, right? And all this stuff has to continually work together. Exactly. I think the backward uh, compatibility is necessity because, I mean, we roam our phones everywhere we go today globally. So therefore, not everyone is in the same level in terms of uh, network deployments. So it has to have some kind of backward compatibility. So one of the things about 5G is this is not just a one user type of, of chip. It's a multi-user type of approach as well as a single user, right? Right. So for 5G uh, test cells, um, the, it's a, a little bit very different from uh, what we have on 4G um, because 5G test cells demand for much higher capacity per test cell, which means uh, higher uh, uh, user equipment, uh, higher number of uh, uh, mobile devices that has to be supported within the same test cell. Uh, so that's that, therefore there's even talks of going into a uh, smaller test cell where we talk about uh, femtocells cells or pico cells uh, where we need to deploy things like massive MIMO, right? Uh, so ma massive uh, user MIMO is, is the key and how we actually do it is the, the different components that really make up the massive MIMO. Uh, number one is the spatial uh, diversity which means you're gonna receive signals from uh, multiple antennas. That's number one, right? So that's very critical in uh, Massive MIMO, how you actually deal with this uh, in tests too. And that becomes really interesting in 5G because these signals are so, particularly as you get into the millimeter wave, they're such high frequency that they don't travel through things and they don't necessarily travel as far. Exactly, yeah. So that's why the, the spatial diversity is very critical because you get signals uh, from all over, different antennas that become combined signals and 
make sure it gets directed to that user or the particular device uh, within the test cell, right? So that's very critical. And definitely resource allocation is also very critical. Um, so how to really maximize the battery lives of the user equipments. So uh, the resource that we use or the infrastructure uses to allocate to a, a particular user needs to be very efficient. And that's the thing um, that has to be taken care of within that infrastructure uh, type of devices too. And the third one is really the spectral efficiency. How are we going to divide the, the spectrum, which is only that small between so many users, right? So that spectrum uh, 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 deployment efficiency has to be there in terms of per user, right? Within the uh, uh, 5G test cell. And lastly is the backend processing, which is the multi-user. How am I supposed to process all the different users that are transmitting or receiving signals at the same time? And this is really a, a lot of this uh, 5G AI that might be deployed in the future, especially in the base station or the uh, infrastructure site. One of the issues with 5G is it's a very complex technology. You're testing a lot more than you were in the past. These chips are more complicated than they were in the past. Sometimes they're even in packages. How do you manage to keep that test moving throughout the fab without slowing it down over what was done with the past, in the past with ATE? Um, yeah, so I think the integration of the different uh, technologies, whether is it packaging, uh, whether is it the uh, 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 the IPs are uh, being stacked and stuff like that. These are definitely changing the way we uh, test these devices today. Obviously, a lot of the new packaging type like SIP uh, or AIPs in, 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 in the coming near future, these are definitely something that we need to consider in terms of tests. So these are all of the learning things that we are actually doing on the ATE that, that, that make sure we can be able to test this type of uh, devices in the future. So we are actually re re revolving ourselves uh, as well in the AT space to adapt to this type of new uh, technologies that will be deployed for 5G devices. And you've got a few years to work on this, right? Because this stuff is not rolling out tomorrow. Um, well, yes and no. I mean, we have some customers that are already have uh, samples uh, that that they want to really uh, ship for early users trials and stuff like that. So the 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 service providers are, are actually doing a lot of this end to end user uh, trials uh, for five G. But but obviously mainstream consumer will take a couple more years um, to deploy. Adrian Kwan, thanks for a great explanation of a very complex subject. Thank you, Ed. Thanks for having me here.